Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Grapple. Today we're going over some of the dirtiest jokes you're gonna find on our beloved show, SpongeBob. Also, by the way, I'm Cartoon Joey, Cartoon Cory's best friend. I'll be helping him out with videos from time to time, but don't worry, he'll be back tomorrow. Anyways, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, click that bell, and let's get to the good stuff. Texas. Well, let's go get some Texas and bring it down here. That's it. Patrick, your genius is showing. Where? You know, I remember being young and just thinking that Patrick was doing something weird. I didn't know that Patrick thought SpongeBob said a word that sounds a lot like genius. Gary, look what I found. It's an old pirate treasure map revealing the location of buried pirate treasure in this very house. Come on, boy. Let's go get that treasure. Okay, Gary. Now 40 paces to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, forty. The treasure must be in here. Wow, Gary, look! A pirate treasure chest! Look, the balloons! Don't drop them. Wow, SpongeBob really made that joke? If you don't get it, I'll tell you when you're older. It's weird enough on his own, but did he really have to wink when he put the soap down? What the? Don't say anything, Squidward. Remember your karma. <laughs> until I'm done with work. See you at the end of my shift. Hey, look! Mr. Krabs put in a kitty ride! I can't find the coin slot! There it is! <laughs> oh no, poor Shelly. Honestly, she probably got a worse deal than Squidward in that scene. Maybe it's an honest mistake, but that guy clearly had it coming. I see a great Christmas photo up. Say, Santa Claus! Santa Claus. Our first Christmas. This Christmas feels like the very first Christmas. The first Christmas is this. <laughs> you were right, Squidward. This is a stupid holiday. <laughs> I still want you to have this. Gee, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't... You're welcome. <laughs> This is the greatest gift I have ever gotten. Oh, I feel like a... I feel like a... Uh, uh, big jerk. When you're seven, you're laughing because that mule comes out of nowhere. When you're older, though, you're laughing because that donkey is conveying a word Nickelodeon won't let you say. And yeah, Squidward was definitely acting like a... Uh, uh, huge jerk. SpongeBob? <laughs> you cannot pass unless you defeat me. And my iron finger style. <laughs> Prepare for the tickling of your life. Look. Huh? If you don't know why a French guy that goes by the name Tickler is on the list, just Google it. Just make sure you have incognito mode on first. You know, call me crazy, but I don't think SpongeBob was looking for the sports channel. What's crazy is that this was literally the very first scene of season two. They really came out swinging. I can't stand it anymore. That poor, poor critter. What kind of inconsiderate person would upset such a gentle creature? When I find out who caused that oyster so much pain, no more jiggery pokery. <laughs> Hey, Spongebob, how come you're all twitchy like that? I'm not twitchy. <laughs> Sorry, Sandy, I have to... Uh, uh, go get my haircut. Spongebob doesn't have hair? Or does he? Even if he did, Sandy, why would he be getting that haircut? Welcome to the Krusty Krab, sir. I'd like an order of chili coral bits. Will this cover it? Uh, sure. Here you go. Ah -ha! You knew I would never distrust a dollar. That's right, Krabs. Now hand over the secret Krabby Patty formula. Allow me to suggest your next move. Yeah! 
for the chaser. Oh my god. Look, I know Plankton is Crouch's arch rival and just tried to steal the formula for the millionth time, but I don't think anybody deserves that. And now, the performance artist Fiasco will say a few words about this piece. Gosh, Fiasco himself is talking about my art. Squid, word, go toward the light of my plank thrower. And now he's melted it. Not a happiest memory. Most of the stuff on this list is raunchy humor, but this is just dark. I just can't seem to get happy. Well, that didn't help. I can't seem to get happy. Maybe this will help. <laughs> After an entire episode of dumping on Squidward's hopes and dreams, we get two separate jokes where the setup is about Squidward literally killing himself. That is a lot, especially for a kid's show. Help! I'm having terrible abdominal pain! I think it was the... the... line. Weenie! The weenie! Oh my, what's with the phrasing? I'm not really concerned about possible ill health effects. How about you guys? Uh, okay, that didn't work at all. It only seemed to increase their appetite for wieners. We need stronger tactics. Something that would make Mr. Krabs' whole wiener thing blow right up in his face. Yeah. They say wiener a lot in this episode, and I'm sure that's on purpose. But that line right there is far and away the most suggestive line in the episode. Sorry to disturb you during work hours, but I just wanted to remind you about my birthday. No need to remind me. I wouldn't forget my best buddy's birthday. Hi, I need a birthday cake. This is what I got. Sorry about the scabies. Can you change it to say happy birthday? <sighs> Do you want it or not? I haven't got all night. Well, that's about as blatant as it gets. What is happening in Bikini Bottom where that cake is in such high demand that the baker has those pre-made but not happy birthday cakes? And why aren't you in uniform? It's about time you got here! Oh, Squidward's into some weird stuff, huh? Well, when I was a kid, I thought the maid uniform was just because SpongeBob had basically turned into Squidward's maid. Now, well, you know. I've changed my mind. I want soup instead. Okay! Don't move! Oh, and there's no back, just in case you were wondering if I was reading too deep into this. to a whole new generation of delicious Krabby Patties, followed by a vigorous midday session of karate with Sandy, and an afternoon jellyfishing with Patrick. And for the grand finale, every one of my closest friends joining together for Squidward's Cabinet Recital. Honestly, that kind of sounds like a normal day in the life. Is that why it's the best day ever? Or could it be because the episode premiered on 420? Oh, and it's also the 20th episode of season four. You can have anything you want with a little training. You just have to learn to be more assertive. Sounds great. Wonderful. <laughs> SpongeBob, don't let that guy sit on you. Excuse me, sir. You're sitting on my body, which is also my face. No, no, be assertive. Beep, beep. Not insertive. At least SpongeBob went for the pocket and not somewhere else. The little beep beep though, that feels like he enjoyed that a little too much. Nothing compares to the smell of cheap plastic novelty items, pranks, gags, and gross out toys as far as the eye can see. What can we get for one dollar? Well, there is one prank that I've been saving for a real top of the line prankster. Invisible spray. Gee, Patrick, just think of the pranks we could pull with this. Good choice. Now be careful with that stuff, boys. It stains clothes. No! Don't bring me dollars! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, SpongeBob, 
SpongeBob, we're visible again. In context, a naked Patrick and SpongeBob holding up a dollar makes sense. Out of context, it sure looks like SpongeBob is soliciting his body, and I'm sure the creative team over at Nickelodeon knew that when they came up with this one. What kind of hot rod will we be cruising in tonight? Only the most powerful chick magnet in town, the underwater heartbreaker. It's more like a chick repellent. I may be old, but even an old bag of shells like me knows that you haven't suggested one cool thing all night. So good night to you. I guess you're gonna miss the panty raid. You're talking about girls, right? Yeah. And you're talking about raiding their dressers for their underpants, right? Oh, yeah. Well, count me in. There was no way I can end this video with any other clip. To this day, I have no idea how this one made it past Nickelodeon censors. It's just so blatant, so inappropriate, and so hilarious.